Chronic kidney disease is any condition that reduces kidney function over a period of time. There are five main stages of chronic kidney disease, with stage one as the baseline for normal kidney function. Stage two starts with mild damage, eventually progressing to stage five or end-stage renal disease. As the kidney's efficiency declines, waste builds up in the body, leading to many and severe complications such as malnutrition, nerve damage, low blood count, weak bones, and cardiovascular-related death. About one in four adults has kidney disease, which is approximately 30 million Americans total. 48% of people who aren't on dialysis but have severe kidney deficits are unaware of their condition, and 96% of those with mild, reduced kidney function are unaware. There are certain diseases and conditions that have a higher prevalence of causing chronic kidney disease, with diabetes composing 43.7% and individuals with hypertension 28.4%, of the chronic kidney disorders overall. High blood glucose levels, which diabetics may struggle to control, can damage the blood vessels in the kidneys. Individuals with high blood pressure heighten their risk for chronic kidney disease as the increased force of blood pushed throughout the body damages and weakens all blood vessels, including those in the kidneys. Populations of individuals affected with diabetes are often from a multitude of ethnic backgrounds with a history of health disparities derived from institutional roadblocks. Chronic kidney disease is more prominent in older adults. In most adults, around the age of 40, the kidney's ability to function naturally begins to decline about 1% annually. There are different contributing factors to the disease associated with each stage. Women are more likely to have chronic kidney disease than men. Non-Hispanic whites, non-Hispanic blacks, and Mexican Americans are most affected with chronic kidney disease in stages 1 through 4. However, Risk of developing end-stage renal disease is higher among men and African Americans, American Indians, Hispanics, Pacific Islanders, and Asians compared to Caucasians. In terms of end-stage kidney disease, the two main interventions are dialysis and kidney transplants. The public at large is familiar with dialysis as it has become ubiquitous with treatment for kidney disease. However, miseducation of dialysis and its limitations have led to problems with the entire delivery of kidney health care. A major barrier to options regarding treatment of chronic kidney disease is the lack of education regarding outcomes, in part because of conflict of interest. DaVita, one of the largest dialysis companies in the U.S., settled a $450 million lawsuit after one of their medical directors, along with a nurse, exposed dosing protocols for dialysis drugs designed to create unnecessary waste resulting in larger Medicare reimbursements. The company protocol directed staff to dose out from several vials. For example, if a patient required 100 mg of a certain drug, the staff would draw up 50 mg from a 100 mg vial, then toss the remaining 50 mg. They would then open up another 100 mg vial, draw up 25 mg, and toss the excess 75 mg. Finally, they'd open a third 100 mg vial and draw up the remaining 25 mg. This meant Medicare, which is paid for by taxpayers, was charged for three separate vials instead of one. This kind of business practice calls into question how educating patients about the advantages and disadvantages regarding dialysis and transplant is up to the dialysis companies themselves. There is no federal legislation requiring a third party to provide education. A study published by the Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology indicated that only 77% of new dialysis patients were receiving some kind of education about transplant. However, the quality of this education varied with 80% of those who did provide education reporting that they verbally recommended patients evaluate transplant and referrals to an outside transplant education program. Essentially, they told patients transplants were an option but if they wanted transplant education, they needed to go somewhere else. For dialysis patients, this is beyond cruel, and in my opinion, deliberately withholding pertinent health information from a vulnerable population. This hit particularly close to home, since this study also indicated that rural areas were less likely to recommend transplant because centers are too far to provide education for their patients. This is concerning since current research favors transplant over dialysis because transplant results in better health outcomes higher quality of life, longer life expectancy, and lower overall health care costs. According to the National Kidney Foundation, there are 468,000 dialysis patients, but
but only 100,791 patients awaiting a transplant. This amounts to less than a quarter of the dialysis population who is considering a transplant. While it is true there is a shortage of viable kidneys for transplant, this should not affect the percentage of people on the wait list. According to Healthy People 2020, the public goal is to reduce the new cases of chronic kidney disease, decrease the chronic kidney-related deaths, and limit costs and complications. Intervention and resources demonstrates there's a lack of causal data that supports early screening in adults and dietary changes have an effect on morality rates related to kidney disease and onset of end-stage chronic kidney disease. All research directed at chronic kidney disease on the Healthy People 2020 website has insufficient data to prove or disprove findings. It is reasonable to conclude that determining a definitive cause for kidney disease is difficult because there are many contributing factors. While diabetes is the leading cause of kidney failure, this does not mean kidney disease is the cause of diabetes, nor does it mean diabetes is a type of kidney disease. Remember, kidney disease is defined as any condition that reduces kidney function over a period of time. Therefore, kidney disease is comorbid with diabetes because diabetes leads to kidney failure. This means there is more research needed to better understand the progression of the disease. The Chronic Kidney Disease Surveillance System, one of the largest exemplar projects for chronic kidney disease, illustrates the need for more research. Their goals are focused on data collection so they can understand its progression and unpack the implications the disease may have on healthcare economics. We'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Dog for and his colleagues in Japan for helping us stay sane during this project. Thank you.